First, let me describe what my new book, How Not to Diet, is not about. If you want to be regaled with success stories and testimonials and before and after pictures, you have come to the wrong place. You don't need anecdotes when you have evidence. I wrote this book for those who want the facts, not filler fantasy or fluff. I'm not interested in offering dueling anecdotes, and the last thing we need is more dietary dogma. What I was interested in is the science. When it comes to making life and death decisions as important as what to feed yourself and your family, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one question. What does the best available balance of evidence say right now? My goal was to create the oxymoron, an evidence-based diet book. The problem is that even just sticking to the peer-reviewed medical literature is not enough. As concluded a commentary in the New England Journal of Medicine, false and scientifically unsupported beliefs about obesity are pervasive even in scientific journals. The only way to get at the truth, then, is to dive deep into the primary literature and read all the original studies. Right? Who's got time for that, though? There are more than half a million scientific papers on the subject with a hundred new ones published every day. Even researchers in the field might not be able to keep track of what's going on beyond their narrow domain. But that's what we do here at NutritionFacts.org. We come through tens of thousands of studies a year, so you don't have to. Whether you're morbidly obese, just overweight like the average American, or at your ideal weight and just want to keep it that way, my goal was to give you every possible tweak and technique we could find to build the optimal weight control solution from the ground up. To that end, we identified 17 key ingredients to the ideal weight loss diet, with a chapter on each. Ideally, foods, meals, and entire dietary patterns should be anti-inflammatory, clean from industrial pollutants, high in fiber and water, low in high glycemic and addictive foods, added fat and sugar, calorie density, meat, refined grains, and salt, low insulin index, friendly to our friendly flora, rich in fruits, vegetables, legumes, and particularly satiated. No wonder a whole food plant-based diet is the single most successful weight loss intervention without calorie restriction and exercise ever published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature, and proven in a randomized controlled trial. Start packing your diet with real food that grows out of the ground, and the pounds should come off naturally, taking you down towards your ideal weight. OK, so that's what I spent the first half of the book doing, laying out the optimal weight loss diet. Then I spend the second half on all the tools I unearthed to drive further weight loss for any stubborn pounds that remain. In the first half, uh, we learned that a calorie is not necessarily a calorie. A hundred calories of chickpeas has a different impact than a hundred calories of chicken or chiclets, based on their different effects on factors such as absorption, appetite, or our microbiome. In the second half, I go a step further and show how even the exact same foods eaten differently can have different effects. It's not only what we eat, but how and when. There are specific foods shown in interventional trials to cause you to burn more fat, suppress your appetite, rev up your metabolism, block the absorption of calories, and effectively uh, take away even more calories than they provide. What's more, the context in which we eat matters too. The same number of calories eaten at a different time of day, in a different meal distribution, or after different amounts of sleep can translate into different amounts of body fat. Distinct forms of the exact same foods can be distinctly fattening. And did you know that combining certain foods together can have a different effect than eating them apart? There's even a food that can prevent the metabolic slowing that your body uses to frustrate your weight loss attempts. Skeptical? You should be. I was too. I went into this thinking I would just, you know, end up railing against all the gimmicky snake oil nonsense out there and put out, you know, the same kind of standard advice on trimming calories and, you know, hitting the gym. 
I imagine what would set this work apart would be its you know, comprehensiveness and strict grounding in the science. I figured the book would distinguish itself, uh, but more as a book of reference than revolution. I certainly never thought I'd stumble across some, some novel weight loss strategy. I went into this project with the goal of just creating a distillation of all the best science, but to my delight, I discovered all sorts of exciting new tools and tricks along the way, a treasure trove of buried data, like simple spices proven and randomized double-blind placebo-controlled studies to accelerate weight loss for pennies a day. With so little profit potential, it's no wonder these studies never saw the light of day. And I was even able to traverse beyond the existing evidence base to propose a new method to eliminate body fat. It can be monetized either, but the only profiting I care about is your health. That's why I donate 100% of the proceeds I get from my books, including this one, to charity. I don't get a single penny from my books, but I get something better. The satisfaction of serving and helping, learning and sharing. Contact your local library or order it uh, for yourself or for anyone you love.